Was there any physical requirements to be a bartender? No. Uh, what Giant really expects from members is cap. Character, attitude, attitude and personality. personality. He doesn't care about your body shape. Uh, he doesn't care how many reps you could do. The primary focus of bartenders, man, is youth and community. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh to all the Ripa Hadith disciples, YouTubers, and viewers. Welcome back to a new video on Rip Right HD. And today we got the OG iNatural in the building, man. Salute, man. Peace. All right, iNatural. Um, a lot of y'all might not know him. Some might know him, but he's definitely used to be with the bartenders. So we're gonna go through a brief history. Um, I natural. When did you start calisthenics and like what inspired you to get into calisthenics? Peace, man. Thanks for having me. Real no right. problem, man. All right. Um I first got into calisthenics, man, in the third grade. Um I was eight years old. Um my third grade teacher was a black lady and I was the only black student in an all white class. So, you know, that was great for me, you know, as you know, as far as, you know, growing up having a black teacher, you know, that was inspiring for me. And she is one of my inspirations because during uh, recess, um, we didn't do, we didn't play in the sandbox. Uh, she had us doing exercises. You had the guys, the, the boys in the front and the girls in the back, and we did exercises, you know, uh, push-ups, from push-ups to jumping jacks, you name it. And she also had us doing chin-ups. And also, you know, if there was a disciplinary problem, that was your punishment. You had to do push-ups and pull-ups or chin-ups at the time. And uh, I didn't mind getting in trouble because, you know, I loved doing chin-ups and showing off and showing how strong I was. So that was my introduction to pull-ups, which was 50 years ago. Okay, yes, so I, how, how old are you now, I natural? I'll be 58 in less than a month. Nice, next month. nice. Yeah. Okay, now from there, what led you up into the ball world or being on a team? Okay, I started playing organized sports at the same age, at eight years old. So, you know, I played peewee football and uh, I played quarterback and, you know, we kids. So, therefore, we did body weight exercises. We didn't lift weights, you know, at that age. So, you know, our coach was, you know, uh, influential in that aspect and introduced us again to calisthenics as a form of conditioning and being in shape to play peewee football. And as I moved along and continued playing organized sports, I played basketball and football as well, baseball, basketball, and football. And as I progressed and got older, you know, my primary way of staying in shape and conditioning was always taught to me by, you know, whatever coach I had, and we did calisthenics, um, especially as kids, you know, and as I progressed um, in high school, um, that became my primary way of staying fit, and I went to college. I've also played college football at Winston-Salem State University, and I was criticized all the time because I did calisthenics as opposed to lifting weights. Okay, so what, what, so at what year was this? Um... 1976 is when I uh, I was in high school in 19 I, my, and, I was in the ninth grade in high school and this is what this is New York uh, well I went to high school in North Carolina I went to a high school East Surrey High School in Pine Mountain North Carolina so you so you're saying you was criticized for doing calisthenics so it wasn't like uh, it wasn't like the thing to do yes yeah, so you you see back then you uh, calisthenics compared to Bodybuilding and weightlifters, weightlifters really looked down at guys because we were rendered as being weaklings because we only did calisthenics. Wow. But nevertheless, I was able to perform just as well as any athlete from just doing calisthenics. You know, so, you know, it sort of disputed what they were trying to say, you know what I'm saying, through, you know, my athleticism. So I was just as fit, just as fast, and just as athletic as any weightlifter. Okay, and um, 
Shout out to Ed Boss Stars because he has a, a video up that you did. What Do you remember how long ago this video was up? The Rip Vegan, at what age was it again? I was 53 at the time, so uh, Rip that's going vegan. on four years. Wow, Rip right. Vegan at 53. So we're going to leave the link so you guys can see that. So how long you been vegan? Um, well, let me start with, uh, I became ca um, vegetarian, vegetarian first. Uh, first. This happened in 1980. Uh, I was in college at Winston Salem, Uni Winston Salem State University, and Dick Gregory did a mm. seminar at a a joining school. It's a school, another college in in the same city, and uh, I went to see Dick Gregory do this symposium on meat and cigarettes and tobacco. So when he did that, he broke down meat and he broke down tobacco and. From that day on, I stopped eating red meat. So I became a vegetarian in 1980. Mm. You know, so I stopped with the dairy and the red meats, but I still ate, you know, chicken, fish, and you know, uh, non-animal. I mean, meat, meat products. So in 1980, ten years later, 1990, I was in prison at the time, and. Uh, I decided to go vegan, and that's when I stopped all flesh, all animal products, all plant-based. Okay, so when we say vegan, is it the vegan in 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 the sense of having the care for not killing our animals, or is it just the plant-based, the diet part? Initially, initially it started out as you know just for diet purposes. You know what I'm saying? I was. You know, I studied and did research on everything I don't eat and everything I do eat. So, you know, I put, you know, prepared myself to answer a lot of questions because, you know, that's something else. Uh, 30 years ago, I was criticized for being a vegan as well. And vegans uh, in a fitness world were definitely rendered as being weaklings. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I was a weirdo, you know, compared to uh, certain... Uh, cultural aspects. If you say you were vegan, they will look at you like you're crazy. So, you know, it's sort of popular now, but, you know, 30 More years ago, it wasn't uh, all it wasn't, that, you know. It's almost like fitness, veganism. Right now. Okay, right. so you was getting criticized for both. Okay, so now, let's fast forward. So you became vegan, you came out of prison, and how long did it take you to find out about this, 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 these teams, this ball world, this, this, you know, escape to to calisthenics with, um, you know, people like Giant Zeph and, and Ed Barstars. Okay, I came home uh, in the year 2000 after doing 12 years and eight months. Um, I came home in 2000 and uh, I lived uh, in Harlem and I, uh, coming from prison, you know, fitness, you know, working out is, you know, part of, you know, the lifestyle, you know, so I worked out continuously and um, there were two particular parks I worked out in, uh, one on 139th and the one on 145th. Uh, at that time, they didn't have any of the pull-up apparatus in either one of those parks. Uh, they had one single bar in 139th Street. Uh, the park is totally different now, but as far as 145th, there was no pull-up uh, apparatus, but they had the kids' monkey bars, uh, jungle gyms and whatnot. And that kept me in, you know, well, I had kids at the time. I had young children. So taking care of my kids, I spent a lot of time in the park. And while I'm watching my kids, of course, you know, I'm going to work out. So uh, that's another thing I was criticized for, being in the parks too much. You know what I'm saying? Mm, um, back then. Right. You know, people was like, why is this guy with these kids all the time? You know what I'm saying? But those were my kids. And, of course, other kids would gravitate over and want to, you know, and, you know, join in with us doing, you know, I had my daughters doing calisthenics at the time. So, uh, Ben and I was from that area. Um, I didn't work out with anybody. Uh, there were a few other brothers that I knew that worked out in the mornings in, at 145th. These guys hustled and they were out early in the morning and one of them, uh, Bam, uh, there's Kevin, there's, there's Willow, and uh, there's Arms from 148th Street. Those men have never been in a DVD or anything, uh, YouTube or anything, but they've worked out in that park for years. So I used to work out with those guys. So, you know, I hadn't, in 2000, um, there was no bartenders, uh, no videos up on calisthenics. 
But I did, you know, I would, from time to time, I would see certain individuals, you know, that, you know, I knew they did calisthenics, you know what I'm saying? I, I would see them from time to time. Uh, one of them was Moms 2000. Um, I met him, uh, I used to go to surges shout sometimes. Out to moms. Yeah, shout out to Moms. Uh, he uh, showed me a lot of his resources, man, you know, in fitness and, you know, uh, other areas, you know. So, you know, he's was instrumental in, you know, me being involved and in getting, you know, introduced to other members of, you know, in the in the Also, oh, from months, you got right. in contact right. with the bartenders. Right, right. So, um, Giant lived in that neighborhood. We lived in the same neighborhood, maybe around the corner from each other. And um, I'm not sure if he just came home and whatnot, but, you know, I never saw him before. 2000 and um, you know we never spoke actually you know I saw the bartenders uh, you know walking around moving around and stuff like that uh, and, and then around I say 2003 or 2004 they came out came out with the bartender video and uh, now I started to you know relate giant and moms and matrix and animal to, you know, while I was seeing them in the neighborhood and whatnot, but I never engaged with those guys. Uh, I was still on parole at the time, and um, I was sort of, you know, on my own workout thing, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, initially, uh, I'm an old school guy, old calisthenics guy, so initially, you know, we looked at tricks as being like, ah, that's Sean, not really fine. calisthenics. Yeah. You know, bar, um, bar metrics, yeah. Right, we didn't uh, sort of embrace, you know, the progressive movements, uh, tricks or whatever you want to call them. We didn't embrace those initially, but you know, as um, as you evolve, you know what I'm saying. As the you know sport evolves, you know what I'm saying. I had to evolve as well, so. So that's so. What kind of attracted you to being a bartender? Well, um, I started. Uh, Looking into bartenders, right? Um, I uh, I have a bachelor's degree in English, uh, so you know what I noticed about bartenders was the academic aspect of giant thinking. You know what I'm saying? That's what initially caught my attention. Okay, you know going into the schools, helping right, at risk, right. youth. So you know speaking. that's something that I always wanted to do. You know, I consider myself. A educator and a calisthenics practitioner and I've always worked with you know not always but you know uh, I started working with youth and I wanted to be a part of an organization that worked with youth so when I looked at bartenders uh, I was impressed because you know that's a 501c3 non-for-profit organization and when I met Giant when I initially well I met him um in 2009 and on the corner of 141st and Lennox Avenue there was a scaffold and you know it's sort of like where people congregate you know so this particular day I'm with one of my daughters and you know she's loves swinging and you know emulating calisthenics so you know she spins on the bar and stuff like that so she was on the scaffold playing around and I heard somebody ask her, where did you learn that? And when I looked and saw who it was, I didn't know at the time, but that was Giant. And he asked my daughter, where did you learn that? And she, my dad, you know, so we uh, introduced ourselves, but in passing, we would see each other and, you know, speak. And eventually, uh, I, you know, I spoke to him about being a part of bartenders. Uh, he uh, emailed me the curriculum. Um, that's something else I was impressed by, to write a curriculum that detailed and that effective to where it's sort of embraced and also promoted by the Department of Education. That's pretty impressive, you know, to uh, have that kind of content in a, in a curri curriculum that's, you know, embraced by the uh, Department of Education. So. He sent me the curriculum, I read it, you know, and uh, eventually um, he gave me a shirt and whatnot. You know, it was a proud moment. Uh, 
And I went on my first uh, show uh, engagement with bartenders uh, in 2012. That's when I started um, with the bartenders in 2012, particularly mainly because I had finished parole. I didn't want that, yeah. that attachment being, you know, a part of, you know, that organization. So I made sure I was clear of all my baggage uh, and some of my street orientated stuff. So, you know, being a part of bartenders sort of put me on a path to, you know, changing, you know, my lifestyle to being more, you know, uh, less street orientated and, you know, about, you know, community and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I saw that bartenders were, you know, the foundation of bartenders was about youth and community. So, you know, I wanted to be a part of that. Okay. Okay, so now this was 2012, you joined the bartenders. Right. Did you ever get into like the trick side of things? Uh, well, when I came to bartenders, I was already functional. I could do anything already. You know, I was, I, my first time seeing a muscle up was in a movie, in a Chinese, uh, the Wu-Tang series, uh, 18 Fatal Strikes. Yeah. If you look in mm -hmm. one of those series, is, there's a <laughs> scene where so it's okay, like they're so working okay. out. There's pull-up bars and there's dip bars, and these guys are doing muscle ups. And this was how long ago? <laughs> well, I saw the movie in 1979, but the <laughs> wow. movie was made in 1976. Find a lot. You know, so now, outside of that movie, my first time actually seeing someone do a muscle up or you know, a trick was in Sing Sing. I was in Sing Sing for about five years, uh, from 1994 to 1999. And I was 5% and, uh, you know, I sort of stayed, you know, with the guards and whatnot. And we worked out calisthenics strictly, you know. Um, and one of my brothers, uh, Kevin Smith, Kasim, AKA Kasim, uh, he was doing muscle ups, he was doing uh, levers, uh, he was spinning, uh, tricks. Nine, uh, 1994. Wow. Right, right, at Sing Sing. And um, we were doing, I was doing muscle ups in Sing Sing. Uh, officers used to tell us we couldn't do tricks, you know, because you got guys. You if know, they get hurt, jump, right, yeah, you know if they I'm get saying? hurt, so, it's an issue. In right, so I already know. You sort of, That's when you did it, you sort of had to look and make sure, you know, but, you know, it's still, uh, that was my introduction to progressive movements. Um, and when I joined bartenders, I was already doing, I was functional already. You was already functional. Right. I was, uh, was I don't think I learned anything there as far as physically. But you know what I'm saying? My, to. my, what I learned from you know, bartenders was sort of like the academic business side of it, you know, because, you know, he sort of entrusted me, you know, with. Uh, certain schools and certain programs. I actually started, you know, uh, you know, with the grace of giant, you know, sort of put me in position to, to do so. Uh, there was a program we had at Polo Grounds. Uh, I was instrumental mm -hmm. in starting that bartender's program. Uh, we also had one in my neighborhood at Morris High School. Giant put me in charge of that one. Uh, we also had a school out in Brooklyn, Eagle Academy, in Bedford Stuyvesant. Um, Giant would let me start programs. I'd stay there for three months and go somewhere else and start another program. So, so how? So who was some of the um, top guys in bartenders at the time when you were in there? That was you know. Okay. Nice the, on the bar. One of the first guys I met was Transformer. Okay. You know, Shout uh, out to Transformer. Uh, he was he's actually one of my favorites because of, you know, his power moves. You know what I'm saying? He has he had I like his power moves. So I'm although I'm a slim kind of guy, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I like power moves, you know what I'm saying? Um I'm more power than grace. But I doubt. You know, so I sorta of got that power aspect from watching Transformer. Transformer. I also met Purple Matrix. Oh man. He Jeez. was my favorite. He was so fluid and mobile on yeah, the ball. The Matrix was, was a problem. Oh yeah, he uh he was actually my like when I when you join bartenders, you have to fill out an application. You know, there's an application process and 
interviews and you get a W-2 and at the end of the year you get the the uh, with the 1090 uh, what's the mm, phone 1099 and uh, you know on the application you know he, he asked uh, who are your favorite bartenders and I put Purple Matrix mm. you know and uh, there was uh, who else we had uh, Male Matrix uh, Water um, did you meet did you get a chance was um my boy down there no question no question was going by the time I got there you know what I'm saying but he's a, he's, he's one that you know something man you could choose any ball athlete man I am like a little kid when it comes to meeting these guys because what's so special about meeting these guys right you you name it you name one I'm like oh my god no question. You know, that's, I'm like elated by, you know, coming in the presence of guys like Beast and you name them. Yeah. You know, uh, Zeph, uh, I'm, I was like, oh my God, like it was Michael Jackson or somebody. Yeah. So uh, the reason why I say that is because you got people all over the world, man, that would do anything to meet these guys. And here it is, you know, I'm right here. I'm in New York City around the best, most influential athletes in the ball world you know what i'm saying so you know it's you like i said you name them man i'm i was like oh my god i finally get to meet this guy you know and uh i didn't meet no question um as a bartender um in my neighborhood people would see the shirt and they knew i was in the calisthenics i'm known you know if you want to know about somebody ask his wife or his family or his community you know what i'm saying and you could go to either one of those and they'll tell you uh that's that's what he's about, calisthenics. He's, okay. Uh, okay, so were you around for Black Ninja? Oh yeah, I love Black Ninja, man. Uh, that's my man. I love some Black Ninja. Shout uh, out to Black Ninja. He uh, he's another one, man. That you know, Black Ninja's into martial arts and boxing. You know what I'm saying? So he's different. He was an athlete before uh, becoming a bartender. a bartender. He was so, already an athlete. So, quick know? question. Now, besides the W two, the the application is was there any physical requirements to be a bartender? No. Uh, what Giant really expects from members is cap, character, attitude, and personality. personality. You know, uh, that's what he's big on. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't care about your body shape. Uh, he doesn't care how many reps you could do. Uh, a lot of members come to bartenders that can't do one single pull-up. Nevertheless, he embraces them, uplifts them, and, you know, teaches them, you know. And the primary focus of bartenders, man, is youth and community. Uh, they have a mission statement that is required. We have to know the mission statement, be able to quote the mission statement. Um, but as far as physical requirements, uh, practices are mandatory. Um, you know, and if you are an employee and working in any other schools or any other programs, uh, it's just like any other job. You know, you have to be make sure you're at work. Uh, you have to be on time. Uh, there's no no calls, no shows. Uh, it's just... It's, Functional as yeah. any uh, nine to five. Okay. Indeed, in the body, literal translation is a lump of flesh, a piece of meat. And when that lump of flesh.